Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Rohan. I'm a second year medical student studying at Cambridge University. In this video, I'll be sharing some tips and resources specific for A-level maths, and also what the main topics to revise for are. So just some general musings on A-level maths. Going into it, I was feeling pretty confident having found GCSE maths fairly straightforward. However, I definitely found that A-level was a big step up, but only really in the A2 level, so that's year 13. This is because the content does get a bit more tricky, but we also have to finish it in a shorter time scale because of the exams in the summer term. So one tip I'll give straight off the bat is, particularly if your school doesn't cover any A2 material in the year 12, I would recommend doing a little bit of pre-reading in the year 12 summer, because some of the more complex examples and concepts genuinely take a little bit more time to get to grips with at A2 level. And time is already quite limited in year 13 because of the exams and also university applications. In my applying to medicine guide, I've also talked about some of the pros and cons of doing AS further maths, then dropping it in year 13, just so you finish off the content a bit quicker, allowing more revision time. If that's something which interests you or your school offers, you can check out that document in the description box below for you to read. Right, with the general remarks out of the way, I wanna quickly talk about some of the key topics at A-level maths. As I explained in my biology tips video, we're doing this to scope the subject so we don't lose sight of the big picture. Obviously with maths, we have two pure papers and one applied paper. This should reflect the designation of time when revising. I also found that following the textbook chapters are much easier than trying to use a specification for maths. For pure maths, personally I found that these were the most important topics. So we have differentiation and integration, especially the year two stuff on this because there were many new techniques to learn. Trig functions, so these are using our trig identities, but I remember we had to do a lot of manipulation to use these identities in equations. Then you have proof and algebraic manipulation. Sequences, so you have arithmetic and geometric sequences. Graphs and equations, so this is quite broad. You have straight line graphs, circles, parametrics, quadratic, cubic, and quartic graphs, and graph transformations. You get the idea. The binomial expansion, vectors, and exponentials and logarithms. And I'd particularly say this one is quite important because it's useful for other sciences and we even use it in medicine quite a bit. So really good to know this well. For stats, the key topics are data collection. This was chapter one and it was quite awkward because you had to learn some definitions and different types of samples. There's also this random large data set if you're doing Edexcel. So just make sure you spend a little bit of time understanding what all the definitions were. Then we had different ways of representing data. So I think histograms, scattergrams, linear regression, box and whisker plots. Well, it's been a long time since I've drawn any of those. Next, we have probability, which is fairly straightforward. Then you have the binomial and normal distribution and hypothesis testing, which links together quite a lot of the concepts in binomial and normal distribution. Finally, in mechanics, there's quite a lot of overlap with mechanics and physics, which is quite nice. The topics you cover in mechanics are Newton's laws of motions, Suvat equations for constant acceleration problems, variable acceleration, where you need to use a bit of calculus, moments, this is in year two, and in year two, you also have a couple more complicated scenarios like projectiles, ladder problems, and considering the effect of friction on calculations. For mechanics, always remember to draw a big diagram and define which direction is positive and negative. I also found that for SUVAT questions, literally writing down the letters SUVAT down the page or down the margin, just writing out which variables were already given in the questions and which ones we had to work out really sped up the process of figuring out which of the equations you had to use. Okay, so I hope that breaking down the main topics has made everything a bit clearer. I now want to round off the video by sharing some helpful tips which I found when studying A-level maths. So firstly, apart from physics and maths tutor, which I'm sure everyone uses to get the work solutions for the textbook, I highly recommend using the Dr. Frost slides when revising as an alternative to writing notes. You might already be familiar with this resource because I wouldn't be surprised if your teachers use it at school. Basically, it's a really comprehensive resource with PowerPoints accompanying each chapter of the A-level textbook. The thing I like about them is that they have very clear explanations. The animations make them more interactive and it makes it a lot easier to force yourself to answer the example before seeing the solutions. I also like how he's linked relevant exam questions along the way and he even includes extensive questions from step papers. So this is really useful for any of you considering doing STEM subjects at university. So yeah, definitely check out this resource. I've linked it in the description box below. Next, it's vital that we learn how to make full use of the Casio White calculator, which is the required calculator for the course. 
is genuinely such a powerful calculator and it can save you quite a bit of time if you know what you're doing. My brother, who's doing further maths, has kindly given a list of functions you should be able to do on the white calculator for A-level maths. Just some things I'd add. You can actually use the X button and do something called like shift X solve, mainly linear equations, but it also works for some integrals I remember. And this is useful if the algebraic manipulation is quite complicated and you're really pushed for time. You can also use it to check answers. So you know for sure that you've got something right and then you can just move on. You can also use a table function in the binomial and normal distributions to generate a series of values for a specific set of conditions. So you don't even have to use the form in the book. It's all very cool. I'll leave you to play around with it. For a more detailed guide on how to use the calculators and what the specific buttons are to press, Dr. Frost has actually done a really big 60 slide PowerPoint on how to use a calculator. That's on the same page, which I've linked in the description box below. Just one word of caution. So although the calculator can save you a lot of time and work, make sure that you still write down sufficient marker so the examiner knows what you've done. For example, for whenever I use the quadratic equation solver on the calculator, I always used to write A equals, then B equals, then C equals, and then actually write out using the quadratic formula, just so the examiner knows what I've done. A third simple tip is just to learn some of the key formulae. This again saves you from having to flick through the formula book, which is quite big because they put like all the data sheets together and includes like further maths and AS further maths stuff, which can sometimes make it quite hard to locate something quickly. Don't worry too much about this because the more and more you practice, memorization will just come as a byproduct of that. Another thing I found super helpful for maths is keeping a bulletproof document as I went through the course. If you don't know what I'm on about, check out my video on general A-level revision strategies where I talk about this in more detail. Basically, whenever I found some questions in a topic test or a past paper or even mixed exercises from the textbook, which I found genuinely quite challenging and the method perhaps required you to use more than one of the techniques that you've learnt or you had to apply it in a different context, I just write down the reference to that question for me to try again in exam season. So the advantage of this is when I came round to exam season, I had a list of all the hardest questions which they could potentially ask. This meant that I was really up to speed with the really A-star level questions going into the exam. Finally, a more subtle point is to do with effective studying techniques, and that is don't get too hung up on doing loads of practice by topic questions. So I know many students are obsessed with doing one type of question to oblivion, then mastering it, then moving on. However, the evidence suggests that this is a suboptimal way of studying, and this is essentially a form of mass practice. This gives the illusion of mastery, but in reality, we're just relying on short-term memory to get by. And when faced with a completely unknown problem in the exam, it will be harder to tackle because we haven't even practiced how do we decide what method or algorithm to use. And particularly with the new spec, sometimes it's harder to identify what your first step in solving a problem actually is because the questions tend to be a bit more contextualized. So mass practice could actually be detrimental to our development in critical thinking skills, such as deciding what method to use. The best practice to do is interleaving which is where we change the types of problems we do within a revision session. For more evidence on this to convince yourself on this thing, I highly recommend you read the book, Make It Stick. To implement interleaving in A-level maths, we should prioritize doing full pass papers, which will test a bit of every topic, rather than doing the same questions but split into topics. Even within the textbook, prioritize doing the mixed and review exercises over the earlier exercises in the chapter. Only do questions by topic if you've actually identified a problem area and you need to do a bit of specific work before moving back to full past papers. So that's it for this video. Do let me know if this style of video is useful. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. You might want to check out my other A-level tips videos, particularly if you're taking any of the science subjects. I'm sure you'll find them useful. But anyway, take care and bye for now.